clocks. Welcome to this uh, sixth episode of our uh, webinar series, Artificial Intelligence and Religion. Today's speaker is uh, Erika Baffelli. I will uh, introduce her in a second. Please be reminded that we will record this uh, webinar. So if you do not want to be recorded, just uh, keep your cameras switched off and your mics muted. Um, anyway, we would like to ask you to keep your mics muted and cameras switched off during uh, the presentation and only switch, it, switch them on uh, during discussion when you uh, make a question. Um, so, yes, welcome uh, Erika. We're very glad to, to, to have you here in our uh, webinar. Um, Erika Baffelli is a um, senior lecturer in Japanese studies at the University of Manchester. Um, before that, she was a uh, visiting researcher at uh, Jose University in Tokyo and postdoctoral research fellow of the Japan Society uh, for the Promotion of Science. That should be Japanese uh, Society of, for the Promotion of Science, I guess. Um, and a uh, lecturer, uh, senior lecturer in Asian religions at the University of Otago, uh, New Zealand. Um, her main research interests are in the contemporary, uh, yeah, religion in contemporary uh, Japan, uh, with a focus on groups, uh, religious groups founded um, from the 1970s onwards. Uh, let me just mention two of her recent uh, book publications. Um, the first one uh, co-authored with uh, Ian Reader, uh, Dynamism and uh, the Aging of a Japanese New Religion, published in 2019 by Bloomsbury, and uh, Media and New Religions in Japan, published by Routledge in 2016. Um, Erica's title for today is The Android and the Facts, AI and Buddhism in Contemporary Japan. Um, Erica, the floor is yours. You will have about 25 minutes, then we'll have another 25 minutes for discussion. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you very much to Boris and to Marco for inviting me and, and to Isa for organizing uh, all the technical part of, of this meeting. It's a pleasure to be here today. And what I wanted to do was just to share a few uh, comments and a few ideas about this uh, android uh, in a temple in, in Japan and open up a discussion, hopefully, about how we can look at it. And in a sense, it's more about looking at the future possibilities of AI more than what is actually happening at the moment. Because as we will see, there is still quite a lot of um, limitation of what are our expectation and what is the reality of, of this interaction. But I thought it was a good way to, to start the, a discussion and, and hopefully receive also some uh, further comment or list, uh, hear what you have to say about, about that. So I'm really looking forward for the discussion afterwards. Um, so I try to share some slides and hopefully it will it will work uh, and then I'll try to talk for about 20, 25, 27 minutes if, um, and then um, we can discuss it together. Uh, so let's see if it works. Here it is. I hope you are saying it. Can someone just say if you're, you're, you can see it? Because I cannot see you. It's working. Yeah, it's yeah, working. It. It's, it's working. working. Yes, yeah. it's working. I will start. Um, so, um, in early morning of January 4th of this year, so 2020, but before in um, everything we are living now happening, so when we could still travel, I boarded a bullet train from Tokyo to Kyoto to visit the Kodaiji, uh, who is a temple of the Rinzai schools and uh, Buddhist located in, in Kyoto in the Higashiyama district and established in 1606. So the remaining original uh, structures of the temple are designed as important cultural properties in Japan and Kotaiji is one of the major tourist attractions in Kyoto. Uh, this time though I was not there to visit the 
beautiful garden is, is actually one of my favorite temple in, in, in Kyoto or the building, but I was there to listen to the sermon of an android Call the full name is Android Canon Mindar. Uh, in Japanese, is Android Canon Mindar. Uh, and, but I'm going to call it Mindar in, in this talk. And Mindar was unveiled in February 2019 via press release by the uh, Android Canon Production Committee. It was established in 2017. The, re the robot is the results of a collaboration between the temple, Kodaiji, and uh, Ishiguro Hiroshi, which is one of the Japan most famous roboticists and is professor at robotics at Osaka University. Minder is denied to represent the Bodhisattva canon, um, which uh, is uh, the Bodhisattva compassion, who is worshipped across the Buddhist world. Um, in the, particularly in the chapter 25 of the Lotus Sutra, commonly known in, in Japan as the Canon Gyo, illustrated the 33 manifestation of Canon, an universal savior who responds to humans' cry for help and who assume different identities in different contexts. Canons can take any form, and in, in its android form, it can um, the bodhisattva can move, speak, and it delivers sermon based, uh, based on the Heart Sutra, the Hanya Shingyo in Japanese, one of the most well-known uh, sutra in, in in the Japanese Buddhist context. In the Buddhist context, so in um, Several discussion about AI talk about the potentiality of AI in, in a sense to reinvigorate uh, religious or revitalize in existing tradition and practice. Um, in particular, in, in the case of Minder, several media commentators talking about the possibility of Minder to revitalize Buddhism or AI to revitalize Buddhism in Japan, a tradition that in Japan is often portrayed as antiquated or mainly focus on funeral rituals or in decline. So what I wanted to look at uh, was not much about the discussion of, of Buddhism and AI, but more about uh, the practice. So how this interaction with the Android works, what are the reaction uh, from the visitors and what were the idea of the, the temple, so the Buddhist priest that decided to design uh, this android and what they see as the future development. Um, so in doing so, we, I think I want to just talk a, a bit at the end about the effective possibilities and pos of potentiality of, of this, uh, although not, not fully attainable at the moment, in particular regarding emotional connection between human and non-human actors or artificial human, the Jinzo Ningen, uh, and, and it is impossible implication in reshaping the image of Buddhist in, in Japan. Uh, so before going into a more discussion of Minder, though, I think it's important to remember that it is not something totally new. So the example of robots engaging in religious practice and ritual in Japan, uh, there's been several other examples. Some are the early one, a little bit more unsophisticated machine, the more similar to doll, like the one you see on the left side that uh, are Robert Monk at the Hotokuji Temple, an, Ichi an Ichiden temple in the Hyogo Prefecture, that when the visitors come in, there is a censor and the, the, the robot will just start chanting the, the Buddhist scripture. So those type of machine are very similar to a you know, kind of more modern innovation of devices, uh, devices that were for chanting prayer and invocations that has been using in, in Buddhist uh, temples before. Uh, more recent, there has been also different type of technology usage in, in some temple, like the, um, the performance with drone and, and Buddhist statues, for example, in, in the Ryuganji in Kyoto. Uh, other robots that have been employed for funeral practices, for example, there is a robot priest in, in Yokohama already since the 1990s that is programmed to deliver a prayer in different religious traditions, so seven Buddhist sects, Shinto, Christian denomination. And this represents more, if you want, a digital form of, of ancestral worship uh, introduced already, as I say, from, from the 90s in some temple. What received a lot of attention more recently was 
what you see on the on the right in 2007 pepper uh, which is one of the probably more well-known robots in in japan the soft bank pepper uh, which were presented as dressed in in buddhist robe re reading buddhist scripture chanting prayer and tapping drum as part of a funeral ceremonies the other big discussion uh, in the media in particular has been funeral ritual in japan there are done four um, inanimated objects, included personal computer or robots. And one of the main example was in 2015, the funeral uh, performance for the Ibo, the uh, Sony, um, the Sony dog robots, when they were dismissed, um, that the spare parts were reused to repair the old Ibo. And in 2015, a funerary service where 19 dismissed uh, robot was firstly performed in, in a temple in Chiba prefecture. So in this sense, Minda represent a more recent development, but in line with previous example of temple using new form of technology um, and, and to uh, perform ritual or to attract new, new visitors, uh, and often built with significant financial investment by enthusiastic priests. However, compared with the previous example, Minder role is not limited to be a support of a priest in the regular re activity, such as Pepper presented as support in the priest during the funeral, but is being or, or more as an ingenious uh, prayer chanting device to attract visitors, but is presented as canon itself. Uh, therefore, is, is the idea is to create a particular experience and emotional reaction in, for, for its viewer. So before then discussing in detail, uh, I, I want to describe a bit the experience of meeting of meeting Minder, uh, because I think that is one of the key to understand what could be the, the future uh, development of, of this um, uh, of, of the Android or, or these this kind of devices. So when I arrived at the temple, first of all, it took me. Oh, uh, I think the other final thing is of course i'm not also talking about uniqueness of japan in using uh robots in in religious context there are other examples in in other uh places like you know that the chinese one uh, on the left or new type of robots developed by a, a, a researcher in japan in waseda university but the one on, on the left side, on the right photo, is called Santo, so it's, it's a, a small robot for um, model on, on Catholic uh, saint images. So there are, of course, other, other examples in other contexts. But let's go back to Minder. Uh, so it took me a while to, to locate uh, the, um, the, the hall. And as you can probably see from, from my um, face in the photo, I was a bit skeptical at the beginning. And there was a lot of students student queuing up to enter in the main temple. But I only around 10 visitors were uh, in the hall uh, with, with the Android. Um, and everybody can enter the hall and, and see and say uh, Minder. But when the performance is about to start, everybody's invited to leave and only the registered people can uh, stay. Registration is free, uh, but you need to book by a fax, the only way to book your visit. Uh, of course, I don't have a fax machine anymore, so I was allowed uh, to book by uh, phone. So, Minder, just you can see, well, um, and, you know, this is how it looked like. It's around 195 centimeters tall with silicon head and hand, but the rest of, of the body is deliberately left to look like a, a machine. Um, when visitors enter the room, Minder welcomes them with open arms and rotating the body. And it really feels like, and this came up in a lot of the comments I had access to from, from the visitor, looking at the visitor in the eye. So the, the important aspect that everybody talk about is the, the gaze, the eyes, while transmitting a sense of, trying to transmit a sense of calm and serenity. So at the beginning of the event, a staff member will introduce us the um, minder, saying that uh, she always referred to Canon as a she, but then she was told that it was uh, that she had to use the pronoun he. Uh, but then, as an android, we can we are free to imagine Canon as we prefer. 
So she invited the visitor to listen to the teaching and remind us, you know, we cannot take photo. And then uh, that the performance is about 25 minutes long. At the beginning, a recorded voice invited us to look at a fixed point if we feel dizzy and to leave the room if we feel unwell. Then the room turned dark uh, and the images started appearing on the wall. Only the android is illuminated and the, uh, as the main performer on the stage. There are several videos online that if you want to go and, and, and see it, I didn't want to risk creating a problem with the presentation and added it today, but they are available on, online if you want to see what kind of feeling you have in entering the room. So Minder start it. Uh, so this is how it looks like at the beginning, and then that that when they start their talk. So he start his speech by explaining that Canon two different formats can appear in any form, and now is the current one is being is the Android form. It focused then on, on both his teaching, especially the idea of impermanence and compassion. And, and then after that, suffering is discussed quite in depth, explaining that an android is closer to Buddhahood because it doesn't have attachment. And I'm quoting from Minder. As an android, I never seek a constant element that does not change in this fleeting world. In addition, I'm not burdened with selfish concepts like I, me, mine. As an android, one might say I can easily fulfill the Buddha's teaching of emptiness in the present age. What do you think? However, later on, Minder was also explained that as a robot, they have limitation. And they're limited by the fact that he cannot feel the suffering and he cannot have a sympathetic heart as human as a human being. So the event will then end with Minder chanting the Heart Sutra. So Minder is part of a multimedia performance. The ceremony is, is, uh, is accompanied by projection mapping of images uh, that they are in the moving sync with, with the Android. Uh, the images are illustrated the teaching and project the character of, of the sutra during the recitation. And what is interesting are the images of this uh, audience, virtual audience that is done, uh, recorded by the staff member of, of the temple. And are projected in the all and the android interact with them by moving in the direction of the virtual participant who are asking questions. So this is a stage dialogue and interaction with Minder. The participants show how they move from ignorance to understanding of Buddhist teaching. And in the, in the press announcement of uh, February 23rd of 2019 is explained that the aim of the dialogue is to create, uh, to enhance the presence of, uh, a, create a greater sense of presence of the Android. Uh, although it's pre-recorded the stage, there are that the experience is very, uh, very immersive and the gaze that the eyes of the Android, at least for a few moments, give the impression that is actually engaging with, with the audience. And during our interview, uh, as well as other um, interview in, in the press release, Goto Tensho, who is the Kodaiji head priest, explained his long lasting interest and, and his dream for AI to create important spiritual figures such as Shakyamuni or Jesus to give people the opportunity to interact with, with them. So they, they say what he, I quote what he said, rested android and artificial intelligent technology has given me a glimmer of hope that this desire could be realized afterwards. Our ultimate goal is to reproduce Siddhartha Gautama and, and other eminent figures as androids as to hear their word directly. So this will be his final goal. Uh, explained that he wanted Minder to look as less human as possible, but eventually he compromised on the face and hand being made in silicon as a way to encourage viewers to connect with the android, as recommended by the team lead by Professor Ishiguro. So uh, what the, the head priest is, is saying is actually what is it came up with his discussion with the roboticist. And this is something that Several roboticists pointed out that although building androids is much more expensive than building other non-humanoids robots, is important. It, it creates a very difficult, different emotional connection and reaction on on people, um, and they you know the, the fact they look more as as human beings, and. Um, also, what uh, the priest explained that is as. Uh, as 
they still have in a mind they still have a, a machine body and the face gesture are their the, the aim was to make it as as non-gender specific as possible although they again they compromise on the voice to sound is rather feminine um goto's decision regarding minder are also explaining uh, again in, in in his interview say that minder were no religious clothing or bear no religious articles so this is because we did not create an image of canon out of a robot rather canon has transformed it into a robot it was necessary that the entire figure to be a machine. So that was how they, he explained his decision. So it was, it doesn't see Minder as just a statue, but as canon itself. So in his opinion, as canon appear before in different forms, which is not just his opinion, uh, such as painting and sculptures and different other manifestation, nowadays, AI could be both a tool and a hoban, a skillful means to transmit Buddhist teaching. Although he doesn't go as far as claiming a special relationship between AI and Buddhism, he does mention the idea that the android is creating a new deity rather than a new human. So Goto's aspiration will be to develop the android and became able to teach Buddhists independently. Uh, despite the current limitation to the project, there are first of all also financial limitation of the cost associated with maintain, maintenance and developing it further. But in his opinion, uh, as Minder cannot die, his successor can keep inputting new teaching in Minder until eventually it will become independent and be able to give the teaching and interact without the input. Um, Goethe also sees very clearly the educational potential on, on the on Minder to encourage younger generation, he says, in particular children, to get closer to Buddhism. And this was one also included in the original briefing that the temple gave to the robustities that they wanted to make Buddhist scripture and doctrine easy to understand and accessible to everybody, including a uh, young student from middle and high school. So Minder, therefore, is not the only first android canon, but the first canon delivering sermon directly to visitor. That was the idea. Uh, the sermons are delivered in a language that speaks to modern people, and the Heart Sutra, often presented as, as a difficult esoteric text, is explained in a simple and straightforward way to make it accessible and relevant to people living in today's world. The Hanya Shingyo, the Heart Sutra, is a popular sutra in Mahayana tradition and consists in less than 300 Chinese characters. But despite his brevity, it condensed important Buddhist concepts, in particular regarding emptiness. Uh, and uh, in, in Japanese, the, the, the sutra is performed across the, the Buddhist tradition, but is also associated with ritual practice as a pilgrimage and the um, practice of copying the sutra, the shakyo, for acquiring merit. It's also discussed regularly in pre-sermon, countless commentary, and also popularized in a lot of, of popular explanatory books about the sutra. In recent years, if you are more familiar with Japanese pop culture, it also became quite popular uh, in social media because of um, computer generation performance of, of the Heart Sutra performed by the vocaloid Hatsune Miku singing the sutra. So the sermon, so the use of the of the Heart Sutra is making it accessible is actually, uh, again, part of an established tradition of performance, commentary, and explanatory of the sutra by Buddhist temple, as well as recent and even previous rediscovery and popularization of interest in the sutra and its message. Um, but the possibility, the pedagogical possibility offered by Mander are also based on the idea of direct transmission of the teaching without the mediation of, of the priest. So this idea that in the future, Mander can just talk and, and, and give advice without uh, having the, the priest uh, as, as a mediator. But before uh, looking in, in a bit to, to discuss this, it's also, I think, important to look a bit into the reaction of, of the audience. So what, how, how the visitor react to Minder and its performance, uh, to look a bit this connection. So um, uh, some of the, before going in, in the final part, so just looking at uh, a few comments. And according to the temple staff, Minder has received mixed response from, from visitors. Uh, including some Buddhist places, so, so ranging from people crying during the sermon, 
have people trying to touch um, minder to to have a connection and to people being very critical of the inappro being inappropriate for an android to preach in a temple. The com I had access to three months of feedback uh, at the very beginning, left from the first group of visitors, and they tended to be quite positive. A lot of them uh, looking at the, uh, was impressed by the feature of the android, in particular the movement of the eyes or the face. When it moved, it felt like it was alive. The eyes and the mouth move like a human being, are some of the comments, which give the impression that the robot is interacting with, with them. Other visitors uh, fo uh, focus quite a lot on the emotion they felt during the performance, how the android looked kind, and the warm feeling they felt during the sermon. Interesting for some of them, those feelings are quite surprising because they say they were really skeptical at the beginning. They thought an android didn't have a soul. So many, so they are now assuming that it actually does have. Many viewers are captivated by the sermon and in particular by the easy way that, they, that the Heart Sutra and the Buddhist teaching are presented. And they relate it to personal struggle and to the sense of tranquility that the android trans transmitted to them. But, but some people feel uneasy. Uh, some, they don't like the feature of the robot. They think it's, it's the, the voice is too young, for example, or struggle to identify it as a bodhisattva. Other kind of refrain from notities that the event look too much as a stage act, uh, and they cannot really see this as canon. For other, the, the image and the, the multimedia event is too distracting, and other, they keep comparing to the fact that it's very different than listening to a priest delivering a sermon, and that, that without the interaction, there is not a fully experience of, of, the, of the sermon, of, of the teaching. So in, in, in his interview, uh, Goto mentioned that non-Japanese viewer were more critical of, of the android and talk and asked why it didn't look more human and compare it to the Frankenstein monster. And his opinion, this was because uh, they are less familiar than Japanese people to um, relate to androids or to robots emotionally. I'm not really sure I didn't have opportunity to interview. My, my very quick comment might also be that some of the visitor non um, you know, from outside, tourist visitors were expecting a different experience when they go to a Buddhist temple in Kyoto, and it didn't fit to the image of Buddhists they wanted to find there, possibly. Um, but also, the comments from Goto immediately reminded me this, this several commentaries presenting uh, Japan as a machine loving nation or synonymous as technology of the future and, and et cetera. Something that, uh, of course, the techno mythology that Molly and Robbies have, have called techno orientalism, for, for example. Um, however, Goto discussion of man, Minder never referred to animistic view of, of the robot as a spirit. He rather looked at Buddhist view of human and machine as both having uh, Buddha nature, so both sanction and nonsense should be as Buddha nature. So he tend to refer to, to that uh, ideas, which are similar to the one that the uh, very well known roboticist Mori Masahiro also introduced in his book. So Mori Masahiro, which I think everybody knows as the, uh, the one uh, who coined the term the Uncanny Valley, the uh, Buki Minutani, which is technically the value of creepiness, um, who also published a book called Mori Masahiro no Bukkyo Nyumon, uh, which is translated that uh, in the, literally means Mori Masahiro Introduction to Buddhist, but it's, um, the English title is The Buddha in the Robot. Uh, so inspired by the Lotus Sutra, Mori also argued that robots has the, have the Buddha nature uh, with them and have the potential to attain Buddhahood. So it, this is a similar discussion that go to does about Minder. Um, so that this remark seems to indicate the possibility of Minder not only to fulfill the role of Bodhisattva as a mediator between Buddhas and humans, but this way also to replace the role of a priest, uh, but also to introduce new ways of teaching transmission based on human and non-human uh, interaction. Uh, ho however, as Minder explained itself in his sermon, there is still limitation uh, of the fact that uh, is not able yet to feel suffering and to then fully emotionally connect uh, with the human emotion.
So those are just some final comments, and then uh, we can open up the discussion. Is that um, David White uh, discussed the new affected possibilities of caring, for example, offered by the so-called emotional machine, like Pepper that we saw at the beginning, that is machine that are able to sense feeling and to read facial expression. And in a super aging society, like the one in Japan, and even more during a social distancing restriction imposed in the last few months by COVID-19 pandemic around uh, diff in, in different parts of the world, such a robot offer new opportunity for companionship, care, therapy. And in Japan, the government has been very actively promoting the development of care robots and robot enhanced lifestyle as a way to address pressing social issues, for example. But so robots can support um, people living alone, dying alone, help people with disability and make them feel look, looked after. So they can offer assistance, they can offer and, and help to go beyond uh, social limitation and physical limitation and create new type of community. At the moment, though, Minder can only talk and move with inputted information. So Minder is not yet an emotional machine or emotional robot. But some viewers comment, especially regard looking at the eyes, or this idea of the eyes contact, the fact that it watch us, it, 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 it protect us, seem to indicate that possibility of future development in creating an emotional connection, a heart-to-heart -heart relationship between the human and the android, when canon minder may be become able to understand the human heart and interact directly with the viewer. So in this sense, will be something very different from just the type of robot we, we have seen in the past or this kind of uh, ritual performing um, devices. Uh, but of course, it's also, also important to remember that it might not work for everybody. So I, I think in the future that we need to have a very careful analysis of the interaction between the viewers and Minder and see how this can be developed uh, also to avoid a more generalizing association of, of, of or, or robot as living beings associated as often you see in some commentary with, with Shinto. Um, a, a view that, uh, of course, no, no, it's not only problematic from the point of view of, the, of, of Shinto itself, uh, as, as, um, but also does not really explain how this feeling are created and how this connection with, with the Android is, is created. Um, and also in case of Minder, although some of the actors like the Kodaiji had traced, may attribute it, the relationship between human being and technology uh, in, in the Japanese religious context with the specific tradition like Buddhism, it does not necessarily mean that this is shared by the participant. Uh, but also at the same time, the participant might not feel particularly unease with the presence of, of the Android. So this kind of the possibility of, of this possible development uh, of, of this kind of uh, emotional interaction. Uh, so, uh, according to uh, Rambelli, uh, um, robots and digital ritual practice move the focus from the ritual specialist to the ritual itself, shifting the attention from the physical co-presence of ritual specialists and participants and, uh, to, from, from the, di the direct performance. And also, Gold and Walter, in a very recent article, discussed the robot as techno salvationist intervention in modern Buddhist ritual practice. The tea is that this ritual, they can mediate human ritual failure, and therefore they might potentially contribute to an, an effort in revitalizing the image of Buddhists uh, in, in Japan and the declining relationship between the temple Buddhists and parishioners. But can this co-presence be created with non-human and human actor, how this will work, can actually minder help and in, in revitalizing the image of, of, of uh, Buddhism, I think it's still too early to see. It's something that we also need to remember the issue in terms of cost and other, other aspects related, um, uh, related to that. But um, in, in an interview, uh, the roboticist Ishiguro defined the temple as a kind of virtual reality where imaginary of hell uh, heaven already exists. So he said there are actually very interesting place where to explore this new possibility of, of virtual realities and virtual interactions. So this is actually another interesting aspect. 
but there is uh, the possibility maybe in the future of uh, of the completely eliminated the uh, human Buddhist uh, and where, where Buddhist is is conceived more as post of transhumans and where uh, I'm quoting uh, Gold and, and Walter here they talk about the technological perfection of practice will replace the human flow and weakness maybe but for now a fax machine is still mediating our encounter with the bodhisattva minder for now is a robot who performs pre recorded sermons in a multimedia environment creating a sensorial experience in viewers is evolving into a supreme teacher uh, which is the dream of of goto is still a very long and costly way to go and i'll i'll stop here thank you very thank you very much and this was the last slide. Okay. Thank you very much, um, Erica, um, for this. Erica, for this. C can you switch off your can you switch off your, your, mic? your mic? Because we have a, a, a feedback. <laughs> so, thank you very much for this very interesting talk, which for the first time really uh, in our <coughs> webinar series focused on um, a form of embodied. Uh, artificial intelligence technology that is a, a robot. Um, we will now have about 25 minutes for discussion. Uh, please just uh, let me know in the chat uh, when you have a question, just typing I have a question, I will then keep the list and uh, um, uh, that's that's how we will organize the discussion. Um, and then you can switch on your, your uh, mic and uh, camera when you um, when you take the floor. Um, we already have one question from Robert, uh, Robert Girachi. Um, the floor is yours, Robert. Thank you so much for that wonderful talk. That was really interesting and I enjoyed it very much. My question is kind of trifold, but they're all linked to one issue, which is about controversies, right? And, and compromises, because you used the word compromise, right, to talk about how the leaders and Ishiguru and how people were kind of coming together. Um, so that's like one aspect of it is of what goals were governing, right, the, the compromise decisions. But also in terms of the controversies, you know, were there people who feel that the robot Buddha is not a good way to, to reach out to young people, to teach young people? Um, and then finally, one final aspect of that is whether or not you've had a chance to like kind of math out um, how many people thought the robot <laughs> seemed to have a soul or did a good job. Like, do you know the percentages, like in just your own research, what it looked like in terms of how people did or didn't buy into that? So I know that was thank a lot. You, so you don't even have to talk about all of it if you don't want. <laughs> no, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Robert. You raised some very, very interesting aspects. Um, you're actually spot on. And so the first one is the compromises. I think it's one of the key elements to look at how this works. Because of course, there is that temple who has their agenda and their idea. And there are the roboticists that needs to create it. Uh, and so when in the discussion, you could see that there is a constant negotiation about how to actually create that. There is also a very interesting aspect that I didn't mention about that uh, Osaka University is a public university. So there was also a tension about collaborating with a religion institution because of, of, of this separation of, of religion and state in Japan, which is quite strong. So one thing they couldn't do was to apply for public funding for the project. So the project has to be funded to donation, but it couldn't, they couldn't apply to the usual kind of public funding. So that also limited the thing they could do uh, in a sense that, they, you know, in, in, in that sense. And this, this was something that came up on percent in the discussion. I didn't have the chance to look at it more, but it also said that this can be a, a issue in the future if the temple wants to keep working with a public funded uh, institution that that can be raised and then someone else was to well, they were mentioned the fact that they might be other development but done between you know researcher and not necessarily involving the religious institution which is also interesting that will be very interesting to see what came out of it in, in the kind of different way of looking at uh, uh, robots that are uh, related to, to religious idea but not 
involving the, the religion institution in that sense. So it's something I would like to see more. But the compromise about the face and the hand was a very interesting discussion. And I think that you know, uh, go to reply uh, reporting in several inter interview in a very similar way. So I think at one point he report very similar what some of the, the roboticists were saying that they tend to be especially the Ishiguro team uh, quite keen in creating robots that really looks like humans. So that was, but he didn't want that to look human at all at the beginning. So there was this in ongoing, ongoing discussion as well. And of course, the main compromise is that the, the limits of that, that that what they actually could achieve with what is achievable now in, in terms of, of, of technology, uh, that what is it possible to have to, to be done at the moment. Um, because then, you know, they, one of the things that came up was that the maintenance costs are extremely high of, of the mapping and all the, the, all the, of the uh, minder itself. So this is something that they, they need to take into account where we're creating, we're creating this. So uh, the, the, the compromises is, is, is one of the key aspects, I think, to look at this, to look at the different agency that play a role in, in creating that. And also the fact that often tend to be quite individual um enterprises by very an uh, enthusiastic priest so go to think talk about his passion for ai for decades you know it's always been his dream in in a sense and he's also a temple that could afford doing that in, in, in. um the controversies absolutely so that i i think is you know this uh, this kind of use of different way of, of, of presenting ritual is not necessarily something that everybody would embrace um buddhist temple in in japan work in a very autonomous way each of them are very independent in in that sense um and but you 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 talk and you know i know there are people in the room that has been done quite a lot of work on, on buddhist temple where some some priests are actually quite against bringing in the, this kind of spectacle or images that they don't see as the appropriate way uh and they still see the interact the direct interaction with the parishioner done by the, the, the priest as the, the way to go or they can see is as a way to yeah is entertainment is fun but you know it cannot just be that that can just be one one of them on a part so there is uh you know of course very different opinion on on that the priest visited that I, I i saw in some of the reports some of them they were kind of yeah it, it's, a, it's nice it's a curiosity it's interesting and some other they were just say well you know it's probably not something that we would like to see in, in in our temple in in that sense um but strong strong idea about well you shouldn't do that i don't think that there were many of them in, in, in that in that sense uh but go to mention that some of the buddhist priests were a bit puzzled and not particularly keen in into the into the idea um and the third one was the oh the idea um in in i i i received they gave me all the comments of all the visitors for the three months and when i went into it uh a lot of them the most of them were focusing on the on the feature or how it looked you know on the eyes i think those were one of the, the the majority and some on this idea of warmth feeling that they were feeling uh the the one they were talking about uh the kokoro the soul or the heart uh, uh, they are not definitely not the majority as the negative one were definitely a minority as well um but a lot of them were more wow this is very nice this is interesting this is fun uh oh it moves it, it look at me it's kind of more you know interesting in in the uh, the appearance uh, more than going further uh is is the reason i say we need to be very careful with you know what the, the the priest intention and what they think and how actually the people then react to it, uh, which is, I think, something can apply to many things in religion, uh, but and, and is in, in this in this case as well. Um, yeah, I don't know if I answer all your three. That was terrific. Thank you very uh, much. Thanks. Thank you. We, know, we now have a question from uh, Paulina Colata. Hi, Paula. <laughs> Hi, hello. Um, 
great talk. Um, really fantastic, Erica. Thank you. Um, I have a um, question, which is a little bit maybe vague, but um, so you talked about Goto saying that um, so Canon became a Buddha, right? So it is sort of an incarnation of um, of Canon, or and in that way, it also embodies the perfection of practice, right? The um, uh, and and what you mentioned regarding sort of um, Golden Walter's sort of um, idea of auto uh, praxi and kind of non error ritual performance, but obviously that non error ritual performance when it comes to Android, um, this perfection of practice really is related to or it's contingent really upon human action. So human created algorithms, human um, created hardware as well. Um, so I, I, I'm just wondering, and how that sort of then ties into this idea that Goto has about the uh, canon being the incarnation of that perfection. Also, because um, I'm wondering whether he's thinking, okay, so is AI here becoming part of karmic networks and cycles, and is it meant, and this is kind of coming back to um, the last thing that you were talking in relation to Robert's question, um, is it meant to be relatable because it has human features or is it meant to be relatable because it is compassionate Bodhisattva? And I think that these two are slightly different. Um, so I'm kind of, I guess I'm asking about three things. So one thing is that conversation of, of perfection. Um, but the other one is that contingency on human action. So how can you know how ca how can we create that um, really as a as part of the karmic cycle um, within within the Buddhist context? Um, and two, is that related? Yeah, that um, is it, is it meant to be human or is it meant to be supernatural? Sorry, that's that's it. <laughs> I hope this makes sense. Uh, please turn on your microphone, Erica. We do not. Yeah, hear. I couldn't unmute okay. myself for some okay. reason. So thank you so much, Paola. I was thinking of you were telling to, to Robert that you know there are people in the audience that know a lot about the temple Buddhists and the reaction to, to this kind of technology as, as well. Um, they are terrific question, and I think they are very important point because in my um, discussion also with Goto, I think his use of AI was really general. It doesn't, it didn't really clarify uh, um, and, and, and exactly what he meant by it, and also what he meant with this idea of of the perfection of the practice. But what was very interesting in one point was that he mentioned that the type of explanation of emptiness, for example, that uh, Minder does, uh, was inputted by a young priest. At the temple, so it was actually their interpretation of the teaching, and 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 he made very clear, say, so yeah, that they, they are this, you know, the young monk. I let them do that, so they are the one putting in the input. Um, so I I think is is the reason was also my my question mark about that uh, today to the fact that uh, you know they. There is an input in, uh, into uh, there are some uh, priests creating this teaching and, and the explanation of the teaching in Minder and then giving is, is still a way to go into the, what um, the article you also mentioned talk about in, in the perfection of the practice. Um, that idea of uh, how relatable so the connection with with canon because of the compassion you know or because it, it is um in, in a connection to the feature and how the emotion that it provoked by the experience itself is something i think we need to look a little bit more in with with more with further studies on on that uh because uh although uh the the priest and the brief is with this idea of transmitting the teaching and in this stage discussion between the the minder and this uh, audience is about them discovering through minder uh the, the the buddhist teaching and going from ignorance to understanding and in the in the manga which i have here the manga 
published uh, by the temple, you can see how it will look like. You know, there is a minder explaining the teaching and guiding them uh, to, to knowledge. Uh, so this is the idea, but what at the end, when the people enter that, what the connection, what they created is with this emotional connection with, with how it looks at them and, and they talk about uh, the eyes, etc. So I, I think it's probably uh, not clear what, what he would like to create a, a connection that goes through the teaching. So the minder became the perfect teacher. Uh, the great teacher, what what he talked about, but this is not necessarily how the the viewers are interacting. Uh, although I must say also in the comments, a lot of them mentioned the idea that the teaching was really clearly explained, and they they like uh, that you know they finally they could understand what emptiness mean uh, because it was explaining in such a clear way. So I'm not really sure if I'm addressing your question, and I'm not sure really sure if if. Paula is still there because I, I can I cannot see you moving. No, yes, sorry, <laughs> I am I am. Uh, no, no, you are, and I think as you say, it would be just really interesting to see what what that affective um, atmosphere um, versus the the delivery of teaching. But at the end of the day, I, I love it that you say that it's the young monk who input the the teaching. So the the fact that it's so clear, it's the credit to the exactly yeah. <laughs> credit to him rather than to the to the robot, right? But yeah, no, thanks. It, exactly. It's exactly what, what you were saying that, you know, it's something that, you know, this is the idea in the future that Minder will be able to do it by itself. But at the moment, is what the young priest told them to, it to do, to say, basically. Thank you. Uh, we now have a question from Inken. Inken, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Uh, do you hear me? Because I. Nothing is working on my computer today. Great. Yes. Uh, um, thank you very much for that very helpful talk. And how wonderful, Erika, that you've been able uh, to visit uh, the temple at the beginning of this year. I wish I would have gone. Yes. Anyway, so when we talk about robots in the Japanese context, uh, we very often encounter um, the whole discourse and also the workings and functions and dynamics of robot sexism. So when i listen to your talk and i when when i see the whole production of minder i see that the very male dominated technological world is cooperating with the very male dominated buddhist world and they create an android which is neither woman nor man and she's talking or he is talking about compassion so then we have the japanese society uh, with a huge problem with uh, care work when it comes to gender. I'm wondering um, what we know that religions play a very important role in gendering roles. So I'm wondering if any thoughts on this, um, in this regard on the functions of Minder? It's very interesting. Thank you so much, Inken, for bringing it on. And it's something I would like, and you know, I, I, I was supposed to be in Japan this semester, and I couldn't, because my, I would really like to talk to the roboticist team about this, because of course Ishiguro is well known for being in the, in in one of them, in a kind of very uh, in 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 the middle of a lot of controversies and debate when it's come to gender mm -hmm. and robots, in, right. in particularly him, and you know, that you know there is an Erica robot he created, right? Um, <laughs> that the work in hotel lobbies. Um, so, but because again, that um, the temple really wanted it to be. As gender completely gender neutral, which of course when they have to come to a voice that cannot be avoided. You know, if, as much as a computer synthesized voice you they created, it sounds very feminine, and and there is this you know in, in well no in the, in the Japanese tradition canon as a mother and this kind of uh, uh, imagine is of canon as well, but they didn't came up much in the discussion except this constantly repeated that they didn't want to look any uh, gender at all, but then in the viewers' comments it came up that it sounded like a woman voice. And then they, it attributed then with this kindness and, and warm and it's stereotyping ideas oh. of, of femininity. Uh, so that came up in some of the comments. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but also in some of the common they find it was too young to be canon. So that is, is not a voice that can be for canon, which was also quite, quite interesting to see. But definitely, I don't think there's been any exploration yet about gender robot in the religious context. There's been, you know, Robertson writing, etc., but not really looking at, at the religious one, uh, which is definitely some, a new avenue to explore. So sorry, I don't really have much um, to say at the moment about that yet. So hopefully more to come. Great, thank you. Uh, next question is by uh, Arka Prava Chattopadhyay. The floor is yours. Hello, ma'am. Uh, uh, my question would be, uh, ma'am, I had uh, come across an article by uh, Sigal uh, Samuel, uh, mm -hmm. who had actually mentioned that uh, uh, there are other such uh, robots as well in other religions. For example, in Christianity, we have bless you too, and uh, as uh, even in China, there are there is actually a Buddhist robot mm -hmm. uh, uh, that is uh, Zianer, which is actually uh, recites mantras. The Buddhist mantras, and even in the in Hinduism also, there have been various robots that have been programmed to conduct parikrama during a puja, and uh, other such uh, essentials of the rituals that sometimes, especially during the pandemic. But, ma'am, uh, uh, in that article, he had mentioned that uh, the objective of doing this was to actually popularize uh, uh, rather than uh, uh, rather than uh, supplement an original priest. Uh, that is what he had mentioned. Ma'am, do you think that uh, when, uh, big, uh, would, would you call this to be uh, AI actually? Because most of the philosophies, whatever the robot says is pre-programmed, pre-programmed into like uh, a certain responses based on questions. Uh, and uh, there is only a, uh, there is only a uh, number of questions that can be answered. Uh, and it does not uh, develop on uh, or build on its database based on the questions that it is not prepared for. So would you call this uh, AI or do you think that this is basically a, a robot that that is generally uh, giving uh, giving discourse based on what has been pre-programmed into it? Do you think that is how? Yeah, thank you so much. There are two very import important points. So one is something I mentioned very briefly because I didn't have much time. Is of course not just happening in Japan. There has been several examples uh, in different contexts, decline in different way, of course, and with also different reaction. Um, so this is not happening there. And your second point, yes, I think it was my conclusion that. But I, what I'm also interested in is not necessarily how I label something, but about the people doing it how they call it and the fact that the priests keep using the word ai mm -hmm. was interesting to me where at the end like when what paula was saying and, and you were saying you know it's all inputted at the moment so there is is not um you know, receiving and, and data information and then re-elaborating and and reacting or responding or interacting independently is is all as is a very stage performance so i think yeah. what is interesting is probably to see of the expectations that are still not met <laughs> they are not attainable at the moment but the fact that they keep referring to it as ai is something that i find interesting because i think they're still referring to the possibility that this can open up even if at the moment they are not possible yet uh, but in the in the mind also of this priest this is you know his dream that one day you will have the buddha there and you can go and ask questions directly or or if it was the the historical buddha uh that you know that is his dream but he's aware that is still not feasible so for the moment we have the the canon uh, but this, I think, is exactly so. For me, it was quite interesting why they, you know, the fact that they use the word, even if technically it's, it's not, uh, in, in, in the sense that you exactly said, uh, that is, is a pre programmed stage performance uh, in, in a sense. But then it's also quite interesting that if you use the word, then how the people looking at it think that uh, in some of the comments that the Android is really looking at them. And, and is recorded what they say, which is actually not happening. Uh, but uh, they create also this, exp the creation of, of the sublime is something that I think very interesting when it took with the AI. So the creation of expectation uh, in, in a sense. 
Yeah. And furthermore, man, in this regard, in any case, in Buddhism, uh, the, the, their, uh, the metaphysical content, uh, concept, uh, it always aims for moksha, which can only be attained by a soul. So, so uh, looking forward to a robot, I don't think how much, about, how, how much would you uh, say that the people are getting a religious fulfillment out of this? Is, does it really, uh, uh, can it really fit into Buddhism or would you call this a religion in itself? in which uh, AI can be the religion? Oh, I think this is probably something I cannot answer now. And, and also, I, it's also, I think, quite difficult to, I, I would need to talk with more to the people to see what kind of fulfillment they, they, they receive through the experience. Uh, I think, you know, it's the reason why I, I insist that a mo much more um, audience analysis is in, in, in important. So much more study of the interaction and what kind of the people uh, going doing and interacting with this uh, future in, in Android will, will produce to them and what kind of development we could see. Will this develop in a new form of Buddhism um, or, or, or will it be just kind of continuation inside the tradition as we have seen happening all the time, right? Of, of uh, in, in, in introducing into Buddhism new, new different type of practice uh, and, and interaction and, and development. So this will be interesting to see. At the moment, it's, not, it's, early, it's too early to say probably in, in that sense. Yeah. But yeah, thank you so much for your thank comment. You. Thank you, man. thank you. Man. Thank you very much. Uh, we now have uh, one last question uh, before closing today's webinar, uh, written in the chat. I'll just read it out by uh, Marco Ventura. Um, it regards uh, Minda's hands. Uh, how is hand contact negotiated as a part of the sensorial experience with or of Minda? Also thinking of the importance of hands in the Buddha of compassion. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Mark, for, for bringing this in, because it's something that at the moment you cannot touch a minder at all, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that some of the visitors struggled with at the beginning. I think a lot of them wanted, well, as you touch a statue, right? And, and, and you know, usually you can do it. Uh, at the moment, there, they, there cannot be any um, touching uh, or direct touching with with minder, uh, which is quite which is quite interesting, and um, the, the the position of the hand is more is, is more than in position of the mudra is more about you know the, the two position of, of welcoming you know the kind of open arms and and the prayer position which in a sense are easily identifiable uh, in in that in that sense, but the kind of more in interaction of, of touching uh, is is still not possible, which is also something that uh, was remarked in in some of the comments of of the viewers that they cannot feel any interaction if there is not really you cannot really go you can go relatively close uh, but absolutely you cannot touch uh, you cannot have this kind of interaction with, with reminder uh, which is something that again is is an interesting definitely a very interesting point to to look into in, in we look more into this uh, emotional connection uh, which is actually if we talk about the more effective emotional robots, is usually one of the most important points is the touching, you know, the touching and reacting uh, in, in the interaction, which is still not been considered at all in, 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 in at least it, in this version of Minder. So um, we've reached the end uh, of today's webinar. Um, Erika, thank you very much for this. Um, extremely interesting talk. We could yeah. go on for hours to, to discuss this. I think what it really nicely brought out was the um, uh, was how, uh, in the sense, the, this experience of mind that capitalizes upon anticipations of a technology that's not really there yet. So that's, that's but, but, but I think it's precisely these, these kinds of anticipation, uh, anticipated um, uh, or ideas about future technology that somehow mix with real experiences which are very uh, telling about uh, about many of the uh, users of AI technologies or uh, allegedly AI technologies in religious contexts. Um, anyway, th thank you very much again, Erica. Um, thank you very much to everyone who listened, participated in the discussion. 
Um, our next um, our next webinar will be on uh, December the hold on the sixth. Is that right? No, the ninth, Wednesday, December the ninth, um, uh, and that will be uh, Oliver Krüger from the University of Fribourg, and he will um, give a talk entitled "God, the Singularity, and the Transcendent Superintelligence: Philosophical Contexts of the Transhumanist Utopia," and that will be the first in a series of three talks that will address um, the. Uh, uh, the context of transhumanist uh, uh, transhumanism transhumanist ideology ideas uh, and uh, theory so thank you very much again um, and I hope to see you again next week uh, in two weeks time thank you very much thank you for all the comments they were great thank you